Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys enjoyed that little gimbal sequence. I got a new gimbal and I just wanted to try it out. Let, let me know what you think. And in this video, I'll be going over the ASUS ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi. Is it the best Z690 Creator motherboard? Let's find out. To establish what I said before, this motherboard is mainly designed for creators. It can be used for gaming, but it's mainly designed for applications like video editing or animation or any other creative tasks like that. Now let's talk about what makes this motherboard for creators. Starting off with the design, a lot of gaming motherboards are very like edgy and they have a lot of lines and makes a, a kind of a gamer aesthetic. I like that, but in this motherboard, it's a very modern design. As you can tell with these, As for the socket, here we have the LGA 7700 socket. This is meant for 12th gen CPUs like the i9 12900K, the 12700K, and other Intel 12th gen CPUs. To power it, we have a, an 8 pin EPS connector and a 4 pin EPS connector. Now let's move on to some of the fan headers of this motherboard. Starting off with the CPU fan headers, we have one CPU fan header here, one CPU alt fan header, and AIO pump header. Make sure you don't plug in a fan into an AIO pump header because the AIO pump header runs at 100% so there's no variability in speed. As for PWM headers, we have two right here next to the CPU socket, uh, right to the left VRM. And we have three more on the bottom, one here, one here, and one right here. And there's one unique feature on this motherboard I haven't seen on any other motherboards. So it's called a CPU over voltage header. It's right over here. And if you move this little plastic piece to the other two pins right here, it, allow it allows the motherboard to basically increase the voltage a lot to the CPU. So if you want to overclock, it'll be good for that. Now let's move on to all the ARGB and RGB headers on this motherboard. Uh, we have two ARGB headers on the bottom, uh, ARGB, not RGB. We have one ARGB header on the side, ARGB again. And we have one RGB header for 12 RGB devices on the top. Now let's talk about all the storage on this motherboard. This is where the motherboard shows it's like true colors. Everything is just amazing about it. We have four NVMe 4.0 drives. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Now for the specifics of this exact configuration of NVMe drives. The fourth M.2 slot, the one under the chipset, is the only one that supports SATA NVMe uh, SATA M.2 drives. The other three support normal NVMe drives. The first one is connected to the CPU, and the other three are connected straight to the chipset. But keep in mind, all of these are still M.2 4.0 speeds. And unlike other motherboards that will actually disable some of the SATA drives in order to utilize some of the NVMe slots. This motherboard, you can actually utilize all four NVMe, NVMe drives, plus the, I didn't mention, eight SATA ports on this motherboard. So you can have one, two, three, four, plus eight, 12 individual drives in this motherboard. Now for USB drives. So this motherboard has two USB 2s, one USB 3 right here, and one USB-C. I wanna talk about this USB-C right here. It's a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2x2 that also supports fast charging, 60 watts. So you can charge like a MacBook using this thing, which is just crazy. It also supports 20 gigabit per second speeds, which is crazy. Not many devices nowadays even support that right now. But let's say you have like an NVMe enclosure. You have like an NVMe drive you just plug right in and you plug it into your PC, kind of like an external solution, but still with the really fast speeds. You'll be able to utilize that with this port right here. And of course, we have the two USB 2 connectors in the bottom. Now let's move on to some of the power ports on this motherboard. So we have a one, we have one eight pin EPS for the CPU and one four pin for the CPU. This is great for overclocking if you're, if you want to do that. This is a creator motherboard, so I don't expect many video editors to overclock. They just want stability. So, but it's still the option if you want it. Anyways, on the right, we have a 24 pin connector, pretty standard. But one thing I haven't seen is this PCIe connector on the motherboard. Usually this goes on graphics cards, right? In this case, it actually connects straight to this 60 watt USB-C, like I said before. It draws so much power that the 24 pin cannot supply all the energy it needs. So the six pin PCIe allows this USB-C connector to utilize fast charging and also the 60 watt capability for charging MacBooks and laptops like that. 
Now for some of the uh, other connectors on this motherboard. There's a clear CMOS header on this motherboard, and there's the overvoltage header like I talked about before. And there's also a temperature sensor. So if you want to add like a temperature probe to monitor the temperature in your system, and you can maybe sync up your fans to that temperature, you'll be able to do that. Now let's move on to some of the RAM specs on this motherboard. This motherboard only supports DDDR5. Let's make that clear, only DDR5. So you can't put a DDR3 stick, you can't be, put a DDR4 stick. It is not backwards compatible, so don't try. The notches are actually aligned differently, so you cannot physically put a DDR4 stick into here. And DDR5 used to have a history of being extremely expensive and had some like issues with software like Premiere Pro or any other, or some games or video editing software. But a lot of that has been sorted out and the price has gone down significantly. And if you're buying a motherboard at this price point, which I'll get to later, you have to budget in the price of DDR5. It is still quite a bit more expensive than DDR4, but it's not the scalper prices that we saw a couple months ago. And if you are looking for a creator motherboard that supports DDR4, the Vision G by Gigabyte is a good choice. Now for PCIe slots. The first slot is a PCIe 5.0 slot, X16. We haven't even seen PCIe 5.0 drives or devices yet or graphics card yet. So this will come in handy when the new NVIDIA 4000 series comes out or the AMD's new, I think, 7000 series of GPUs comes out. So that'll be helpful. The second slot is a PCIe 5.0, but it's wired in X8. And the third slot is a PCIe 3.0. Now let's move on to the VRM system. Here we have a 16 plus one phase VRM system. 16 phases for the CPU and one for the RAM. And coupled with the eight plus four pin EPS connectors and the massive and modern heat sinks, this board is more than suitable for overclocking. Now let's talk about all these super impressive back panel IO, it's, it's, it's nuts, I love it. We have two DisplayPort inputs, these are inputs not outputs. What you do with this, you take your graphics card, you run the DisplayPort cable from your graphics card into the, into the DisplayPort input, and then you can basically output it through these two, two Thunderbolt ports. We have an HDMI input, sorry, HDMI output, this is for your Intel iGPUs. We have a 10 gigabit ethernet, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Many people think this is kind of useless, but if you have a NAS, this is perfect. You can just connect straight to your NAS and get blazing fast speeds. We have two Thunderbolt ports, again, super fast, great to see. And we have six, six USB 3, 10 gigabit per second ports. That's absolutely nuts. This is perfect for putting files onto your computer really quickly. It's, it's great, I love to see it. And we have a Wi-Fi 6E, this supports Wi-Fi 6, and I believe Bluetooth 5.2. And then we have our audio stuff, and we also have a BIOS flashback. Now as a creator, this is the dream back panel IO. I don't have a NAS myself, but if I had one, this would be perfect. There's so many super fast USB, USB ports, super fast uh, ethernet ports, super fast uh, Thunderbolt ports, everything on here is just great. It's perfectly tailored to content creators. Now for some of the content creation specific kind of features on this motherboard. One thing I like to see, Asus added this extra security feature, which basically lets you set the USB ports to either read only or write only for added security. This motherboard also comes with the software called Creation First. The software basically allows the user to prioritize certain content creation applications like Premiere Pro and After Effects so that you don't experience any hiccups in your performance and it'll be all nice and smooth. So what do I think about this motherboard? As a creator myself, I really love this motherboard. I kind of wish I had it. I love all the expandability you get with all the NVMe drives and the SATA drives, all the fast USB ports, Thunderbolts, display ports, USB, this 20 gigabit USB-C thing, it's absolutely perfect. It does, however, come on the pricier side at $479. But for you super heavy video editors out there, I think this is the perfect choice. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to subscribe, like, share this with all your content creator friends. Thank you for watching. See you next time.